In the last video, we have created a pattern grid. So the grid that stores integer indexes mapped to each pattern. This video, we will be focusing on finding the neighbors, so extracting data from the input that will be used by the algorithm to create an output. So we are considering a pattern grid of pattern of size 1, so each pattern represents one tile. In the image on the right, I have selected a, a tile that represents the end of a road. And this tile inside our pattern grid is represented by the index 2. Now we can see that index 2 was only present once in our input image, so our input tile map. So as we are looking at the neighbors, so the pattern indices, that are up, down, left and right from any instance of index 2 in our pattern grid, we can see that only the uh, one inside the light gray rectangle matters because it has uh, to the left uh, 1, to the right 3, up 0 and down 0 and the remaining instances in the darker gray uh, outline uh, lines uh, have the same neighbors. So this means that our index uh, 2, our pattern of index 2, can only have uh, one neighbor in each direction. And we save those informations inside a list uh, that is mapped to a direction. So as we said previously, the, in the direction up, uh, we have pattern 0 that can be a neighbor of this uh, tile of this pattern of an index 2. Uh, to the uh, left it is 1, a pattern of index 1, to the right it's a pattern of index 3, and downwards it's also pattern of index 0. On the other hand, if we look at pattern 0, it has much more instances inside the light grade box, and this means it might have much more uh, possible neighbors in each direction. For example, uh, if you take a look at each instance of zero and in downwards direction, it can, it can have either two or four or one. This strategy can be applied for uh, any pattern, so pattern of any size. Here we can see that no matter what pattern size is, our algorithm can still recognize neighbors on the pattern grid by looking at each instance of the same pattern index at each cardinal direction in our grid and collect neighbors into lists and map those lists to a respective direction. Now this approach is sufficient but not the most optimal for patterns of a greater size than one. In an example from Oskar Stolberg that we have previously seen, we have uh, seen that he took pixel values for his solution and compared pixel values for each tile to find the neighbors. In our case, we have a grid of uh, tiles and the structure of the grid allows us to find neighbors. Because of that, we will be implementing a different strategy for multi-tile patterns uh, so that we can get more efficient algorithm. Now, we will take a look at a multi-tile pattern example. In this example, we will take a pattern of size 2 and consider it when finding neighbors. neighbors. If we take a look at patterns in the, shown in the middle images, you can see that those two patterns are not adjacent as far as the grid is concerned, but they actually are neighbors. Uh, you can see that two vertical tiles of grass can make them compatible uh, as a left-right neighbor depending on from which pattern you start. You can see it at the, uh, in the image to the far right on the slide. You can see that we are comparing if the images can overlap. Uh, so the grass tiles allows those two patterns to overlap. So we can say that those two patterns are uh, neighbors. They can be neighbors, but only in those specific directions 
So left or right, depending on from which pattern you're looking at the uh, at, case, at the case. So uh, you can see that this approach uh, has allowed us to find yet another pattern that is possible for us to use. And uh, this is why we will be using this strategy instead of uh, looping through the grid of patterns uh, for looking for neighbors or multi-tile patterns. And this is important because this is the place where you could tweak your algorithm to fit your needs uh, better than uh, what we have here as a standard implementation. For example, if you have played with uh, Oscar Stolberg's tool that I have shown you previously, you could have seen that uh, he used pixel values as data for finding neighbors. And you could apply the same thing here. So it all depends on what you need and your own implementation of the strategy. Our algorithm will allow you to create your custom strategies and using them in our implementation of wave function collapse algorithm. So uh, we have found our neighbors. In the next video, we will be taking a look how core solving algorithm will be using those uh, neighbors and the patterns found uh, by our pattern, pattern finder uh, in uh, creating the output image.